92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com, streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. Audio and soon-to-be video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Scott is here. Hey, Scott. Good morning. Hey, nice to have you back with us. Good to be here, sir. Congratulations on your volleyball coverage Saturday night. Thank you very much. Good job. We enjoyed it. Congratulations to the Lady Zebras. Yeah, tough, tough loss, but at the same time, good match to watch. Absolutely. Okay. Brian Johnson here from the Community Foundation. Hey, Brian. Good morning, Tom. Nice little, to have you with us. A little bit cool out there. I didn't drive by the Optimus stand this morning, but I'm guessing there may have been some frost on the pumpkins. Ah, uh, probably with some frost and frost. Appropriate for yeah. the end of October. Yeah. That's, so. that's, that's a pretty good segue, Brian. It I, is. I like the way you just well, kind of worked your way well, into there that. there we well go. Done. I worked all night on that well, last I bet night. You. So. <laughs> I bet you did. Uh, more so grumbling when I was scraping the windshield this morning that's with right. the frost. but. Busy so, times for the foundation, well, that we know. It is, and we've got a lot of things going on. Um, just kind of catching up on a couple of things. Of course, um, the Kiwana Fall Festival was at the end of Huge September. Huge success again. Um, we had the honor of being able to be the grand marshals of that parade as a community foundation. Um, of course, we've been able to support the Kiwana area, um, the park in particular that a lot of the events for the fall festival happen in. So it was exciting to see that and something that we were able to do. Of course, we're coming up on our 25th anniversary. That's right. In October of 2018. So we're kind of use that as our kickoff a year ahead of time. Um, and provided what we have deemed a pop-up grant. So okay. we got to the judges' stand at the fall festival and were able to present a grant to the Union Township Park, which is right there in Kiwana, um, $4,000. So we'll be doing some more of these throughout the year, just kind of celebrating some of the projects. But um, it, it's really neat to be able to do that and be able to provide some support to organizations that do so much for our community. If you haven't been to the Kiwana Park, I'd encourage you to stop by. It's, it's a really nice park, some good playground facilities, basketball, tennis courts. Um, and a lot of like folks that. use it. And a lot of folks do. And, of course, right. it's highlighted during the fall festival. A lot of the things happen down there. So um, it was a great festival. Me and um, my son were able to enjoy many of the amenities before and after the parade. And and really is a great family event. So, Congratulations to Tom they, Mate and the whole crew that yes, pushed that thing together. Keep up the good work. That's right. So um, just a note... Um, that our scholarship applications for high school seniors will be available. Um, look for that to be on our website at the start of December. Um, so students start looking for that. Um, and then the, that deadline is usually um, the first part of March. Um, so you have some time, but um, we have around 45 scholarships that get listed on there um, that um, whether it be from um, a field of study, a school, something you've been involved in, there's probably something that applies to about every student that's um, planning to continue their education um, once they graduate from high school. So um, we'll have more reminders about that, but kind of keep an eye on our website, um, nicf.org. Um, we'll have information okay. up about that. Um, and something else is coming up. It's, it's the end of October, but... Um, that means November's coming up and Thanksgiving. Um, we're planning to do our uh, our third Giving Tuesday event. Um, that'll be Tuesday, November 28th. Um, it's always the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving, so you can get the you can have your Thanksgiving meal and watch your football and get your nap in and get ready for Black Friday. Right. And then you have Small Business Saturday, right. which we have great success here locally with, and then you have Cyber Monday. And so what's natural after that is Giving Tuesday. So this is a, um, a day that's been set aside. We, we often have people come in and say, you know what, I don't want any more stuff. I don't need any more stuff. So if somebody wants to give me a gift, I ask them to make a gift to a fund that um, I'm passionate about. So this is an opportunity for somebody to make a gift to a fund in the community and be able to um, do that in honor of somebody, maybe a nice Christmas gift for somebody that sure. has told you, I don't want any more stuff. Um, so it's an, an event and we'll have um, more information about that coming up, but we always do some information as far as um, just kind of some highlights, what the foundation has done over the past year. Um, we'll be live can we say live and in color on the radio? Yes, we will. Um, you bet. That morning on WROI, kind of right. highlighting some of the things that we've done. Um, so check us out. We'll have more details coming up. But that again, that's Tuesday, November 28th. 
Um, we'll also have some matching funds available for community funds, which are the same ones that we raised through um, the recent Lilly Initiative uh, matching program. So if you're interested in that, give us a holler um, so we can help you make some holiday giving plans. So, Well, and we've also, I mentioned the 25th anniversary, we're just getting ready to start. And here in a second, we'll kind of talk about some of the beginnings of the foundation. But throughout the next year, we're looking at doing some special things. Of course, I mentioned the pop-up grant. We'll be doing more of those. Um, and the foundation was started in 1993, so 2018 is our 25th anniversary. So we'll be looking at some exciting things going on um, leading up to that point and kind of give some history and some information if somebody doesn't know what the foundation has done. Okay. So, so today what I wanted to do was talk just a little bit about community foundations in general and then talk a little bit about Lilly Endowment. And then talk, just touch briefly on how the community foundation started here. Okay. So, um, the first community foundation was actually started in Cleveland, Ohio in 1914. Um, an attorney in the area was working with a number of trusts that they really had no ability to be able to pay out because the purposes were no longer valid. And so he said, you know what, there ought to be a way that we can do something good with this money. And so the idea of community foundations were hatched um, at that point. And so now um, throughout the United States, there's about 750 community foundations throughout the United States. That's not very many when you think about That's it. That's not a whole lot. Now, the interesting fact is Indiana has 92 counties and we have 94 community foundations Excellent. In, wow. in the county right. or in the state. Um, so Indiana has about 15% of the community foundations nationwide. And really a lot of that is due to Lilly Endowment. Um, kind of a little bit of a history it's it's often confusing when you hear the name lily of course everybody thinks about the eli lily drug right. company which is not directly associated with the lily endowment other than the fact that that foundation was actually started in 1937 by three members of the lily family um, they started a private um, private foundation and endowment and it's one of the largest in the united states and so um, that was started by family members and has done so much great things for our state and continue to do those. It's 80 years it's, when you think about it. It is. Yeah. And it's, it's really been wonderful to see. And so they, they looked at some things like they have three areas where they look at education, um, religion, and then also community development are the three focuses that they look on. So they do initiatives throughout those um, areas. But what what was happening is there were so many people going to Indianapolis and saying, hey, we've got a great idea for a project in our community. And the Lilly Endowment Group was saying, that really sounds like a great idea, but what we'd really like to know is from people living in your community, not from us in Indianapolis that are looking at this from the outside, from people living in your community, what is the most important thing for your community? Because these all sound like, these all are great ideas, but we want to know what's the most important right now. And so, um, Lily, there were a handful of community foundations in Indiana in 1990, um, but they came out with what they've called the GIFT program. And that's an acronym, so Give Indiana Funds for Tomorrow. And what they said is we want local communities to be able to have their own community foundation so you can have the opportunity if somebody lives in Fulton County and says, hey, I want to give to something local. They don't have to either start something themselves, um, a private foundation, which may be cost prohibitive if, if you're not independently wealthy, or give to something outside of the community where the gifts may come back to the community. So Lily said... We really want local communities to be able to have their own community foundation. So they started the gift initiative and said, we will match. And they had actually five initial phases of it. We will match at various levels. If a local community can raise X amount of dollars, um, it was anywhere from 50 cents on the dollar up to, in some cases, $3 to each dollar, um, we will help match and help get that foundation started. And their ultimate goal was to be able to say, okay, in 15 years, we want 
these community foundations to be self-sustainable. So we don't have to put extra funds in to keep you going, but you have that local option. And and looking back at that, that was that's really been a huge thing. Um, so looking back, 1990 before the gift initiative was started, it was estimated there were about 30 million dollars in assets and community foundations throughout the state. Um, the last number that I was able to find, 2015. Um, there's over $2 billion wow. in assets and community foundations. So you ask about the success of community foundations um, throughout the state. It, it's really wonderful to see how much that has um, grown. And now, growth, now right. we're sitting here, the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. We've been able to grow to the point where we are a self-sustaining organization, be able to say, if Lily never gives us any more money, that we will be able to continue to serve our community here Excellent. locally. And, Excellent. And that's that's really a great thing. And we do have um, really the, the only direct connection we have with Lily right now is the community scholarships that they mm-hmm. offer. Um, but other than that, we are a, a self-sustaining organization. So it's wonderful to see that um, Lily's vision has been, and so many communities throughout the state are able to sit down and have that same conversation and say, we are here because Lily helped us, the Lily Endowment helped us get there, but now we are able to serve our community and be sustainable as an organization. So some of the things that we've been able to to do um, have been supported by Lily, but now we're to the point where we can, we can now be able to do those similar types of things. So it's wonderful to see that. So a little bit of history about the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, It's, it's kind of interesting when we look at that, um, in 1993, of course, the gift, gift initiative started in 1990, and so a bunch of local folks were talking about, can we do this? Um, in 93, the, the um, Lilly Endowment had one application spot left for a community foundation. So there were some folks from Fulton, Miami, and Cass counties that got together and said, we think we can go together as the three counties and make an application. They were successful. And that's where the Northern Indiana Community Foundation was born. Um, Just a little bit of a history moving through the years. Of course, now we are Fulton, Miami, and Stark counties. So what happened, 93, Fulton, Miami, and Cass County started. In 96, um, Stark and Pulaski County joined um, and became a five-county association. Then about 2001, Cass County was able to move away and have their own independent county foundation. And then Pulaski, about 2002, um, the same thing. So that's how we come to the three counties that we have now. And it's really a wonderful Um, wonderful arrangement to be able to have multiple counties, whereas we can focus on specific counties, but then offer, offer more services because we can pool the three. Um, But it's, it's been kind of interesting to see how Lily has done things early on. One thing that they said is we want you to be able to raise different types of dollars. One of, one of the early phases talked about um, community funds or unrestricted funds. Um, those funds that are able to make grants. And then they gave the local foundation some flexibility to be able to, what they did with that, whether they granted those out, whether they put those in endowments. And it, it was great to see, of course, we're sitting here 25 years right, later. Exactly. And saying, this was a great decision by those folks that had some vision in 93 and said, you know what, we really should put as much of this in endowed funds as we can. And so now we're sitting here in Fulton County being able to give out $200,000 plus in in community grants every year because a group of people in 93 said, this is a great idea. This is how we think we should do it. And so we're reaping the benefits today. And that's that's part of the beauty of of an endowment and part of the reason why Lily wanted foundations to create those endowments. So those gifts given in 93, 94, 95, are being used today to be able to make grants um, to community projects. And it's an ongoing stream where um, it's great to be able to help organizations. And then if I give a gift today, like when I give my gift on Giving Tuesday, next year that money will still be earning for grants. And the year after that, we'll still be earning for grants. So it's wonderful to see that, that foresight. Of course, Lily 
had the experience in 1990. They started in 37 and said, you know, we see how endowments have worked and how they have benefited our community and our state and our nation. Um, so we want this to be local and have that same opportunity. And so they've been successful even when um, some of those early phases, we have some projects like you think about the the round barn at the golf course, um, the Kiwana Park that we mentioned, mm-hmm. um, Lighters Ford, um, they were able to construct a community center. Um, Akron did a number of projects, some tree planting projects, some different things throughout the community. Those projects were were gifts that Lily early on made and said, we want you to grant at least this much out to community projects to be able to show people how this works so that they can say, oh, this is how a grant works. This is how a community foundation can work. And so now, 25 years later, we're sitting here and we're able to do that same thing as far as grant out um, to community projects. And so it's wonderful to see how that um, idea has really come full circle. And the other great thing about it is you think about, okay, these monies are here in Fulton County. We don't have to compete with other communities. Exactly. We don't have to go to the state and maybe compete against another community that we know that these funds are going to be used to impact Fulton County. And so that's that's the beauty of it when we say we can grant out $200,000 to community projects. That's only projects in Fulton County. You know, so many changes have happened over the almost 25 years now for the foundation, but I think one of the best came recently with the cycle in terms of applying for yes. the grant. Yeah, and that was something that we really, um, in the start, the funding wasn't, the capacity really wasn't there. Because if you if you have have a very small amount of funds to be able to grant out, you can't necessarily always do everything that you want to with that. Um, but the last couple of years, we've been able to revise that, and we, we would have, in the past, we would have a, a grant application available at a certain time of year, usually in the summer, and then sometime in October, right. we would have a deadline, and then in November, we'd make those awards, and you think, well, what happens if my project is in July? <laughs> what do I have to do then? That's right. And so partially due to the response that we got from from the last um, Lily Gift 6 match, um, but partially because of some of those decisions made early on, we've been able to grow that pool of funds to be able to have some flexibility. So if somebody has an idea for a project in July, they come to us in May and say, I've got this great idea. Can I get some grant funding? And we say, well, you know what? We have the grant application available now our committee will meet next quarter and we can make a decision on that and you can know now you don't have to apply the year before for your grant dollars and so that's really been a wonderful thing because we we've seen some situations where they didn't know that they had those needs the year before when our grant deadline would have been and so being able to react to that on a more quick basis in almost a real time situation has been able to help us help organizations that didn't know that they had these needs until they knew that they had them and then it was time to apply and so that's that has been really beneficial and that's really because of our donors sure. um, having that flexibility to be able to do those projects throughout the year and it's worked out really well you look around the community and you see some of the things that that have happened this year that were not happening last year and we've been able to support it's it's been really exciting to see that um to be able to make that change and just have the capacity to be able to react more quickly so we don't have to make a grantee work on our timeline, we can support their project on the timeline that works for them. So hey, it's Brian, I don't want to wait for Giving Tuesday. I want to give you something ahead of time or ahead of that. Uh, how can I do that? Well, you can give us a call <laughs> okay. or stop by our office or stop by our website. We're always happy to talk about that, even if you just have questions. A lot of times what we get is questions. Of course, we have about 160 or 170 individual funds. Um, So sometimes it's not even starting a new fund. If somebody wants to talk about doing something that we don't already do, we're always happy to do that. But if we have a fund that maybe would fit 
um, the gift that somebody wants to give, we'd always love to talk about that and kind of point um, folks in that direction. Of course, folks can give online on our website, nicf.org, kind of exciting in the near future, probably towards the start of the year. Um, we'll have a new website that'll be a little bit more user-friendly. Um, I have some more information on that. We're in the process of that right now. Okay. Um, but if somebody says, hey, I want to make a good donation and it's two o'clock in the morning and <laughs> I want to make this online, you can give us a call. I probably won't be at the office <laughs> at 2 a.m. Never know, but um, you can make a donation, nicf.org. There's a donate now button on that. Um, of course, you can always give us a call, 224-3223. We okay. can talk through some of the ideas you may have. Um, our office is at 715 Main Street here in Rochester. We always love to talk about ideas that people may have or questions or just about what the foundation does in general. It's Brian Johnson, as always, very good information. Thank you so much for being here. Keep up Thanks, the good Tom. work for NICF. Okay? Well, we, we do it because our donors make it possible for us. So thanks to our donors. Brian, thanks. 